Well, the book is called uh, Conquered into Liberty, and it takes a series of battles along what Indians call the Great War Path, which is the, the route that goes from Albany to Montreal, about 200 miles of uh, water and woodland. Uh, the book really begins in 1690 with the French burning of Schenectady, which is just outside Albany. It ends more or less with a Confederate raid on St. Albans, Vermont, of all uh, places. It's the, uh, one of the northernmost uh, battles of the, uh, if one can call it that, of the Civil War. And th the basic idea of the book is to take a series of what I call revealing battles, battles each of which tells you something about uh, the way Americans have approached war and the way in which that approach has really been shaped by almost two centuries of conflict with what is now Canada, first under French, then later under British rule. Well, I would say, I would put it a little bit differently. I think it w it's underappreciated how important that was. Uh, historians have tended very much to focus either on the Civil War, on World War II, or the frontier shaping the American approach. I think what was distinctive about the conflict with uh, Canada was really two things. First, and I think it's a very important point to bear in mind, the, what is now the United States was plugged into international politics well in the colonial period and we've really remained plugged in ever since. And so that uh, what we call World War I is by some counts World War VII, and we've been involved in each one of them, and I think that's very important. The, the other th thing is that the, the conflict with Canada really involved a kind of hybrid military style. There's both conventional conflict, uh, say the attack on Fort Ticonderoga in 1758, an army of 15,000 soldiers, the largest army seen in uh, North America, indeed probably in the entire Western Hemisphere to that point. But then the kind of low-level, irregular warfare uh, shading off into terrorism. Um, and that both forms of warfare periodically merged and, and co-evolved. And I think that's, um, that's also a dimension of our history which we sometimes forget. Well, I think the, the environment uh, had a lot to do with tactics. It's a very uh, difficult woodland uh, environment. Most of the Great War Path is actually water. Uh, but the main thing to understand is this was not a place where people could live off the land. And so in very important ways, the fact that the United States, before that the English colonies, were thinking about projecting power had all kinds of um, implications. One of which was, I think, the beginning of the American logistical tradition. Uh, you know, we built fleets really in the wilderness, uh, if you think about it, and a, quite a remarkable uh, kind of feat. So I think that's one way in which that prolonged period of warfare had enduring consequences for how we think about it. Americans tend to think logistically. How do you get a lot of stuff uh, to the fight? So that's one thing. Obviously, it had an impact as well on the kinds of uh, particularly irregular tactics so that, for example, uh, one of the stories that I, I go into at some length is the evolution of uh, Robert Rogers of the Rangers. And, um, you know, today we have the 75th Ranger Regiment of the United States Army. Most infantry, almost all infantry officers go through Ranger School. Well, that all really harks back to the middle of the 18th century. And that's where they trace their lineage to. Well, the, the, you know, the title of the book is Conquered into Liberty. Uh, that comes from a pamphlet that we scattered about Canada before we invaded it in 1775. People sometimes forget we invaded Canada before we had even declared independence. And before we did that, Congress had a subversive pamphlet uh, drawn up in French to try to win over the French Canadians, which begins, you have been conquered into liberty. And if you think about it, that's kind of an enduring theme. Um, and whether one is, was for or against the war in Iraq, uh, or I suppose in Afghanistan too, you could argue that's sort of what we're still doing. It's been part of the American way of war for a long time.